Let me uh, go ahead and pause there and, uh, and take your, your questions. I think I've left about 10 minutes. General Cohn, you mentioned the regional alignment of corps and divisions. What does this do to the role of existing Army Service Component Commands, which tend to be smaller and reasonably efficient in supporting regional combatant commanders? I, th I think there, there's going to be a fusion uh, of those uh, functions. And I, th I don't think you can say that one size is going to fit all uh, and that each of the uh, combatant commanders is going to have to have uh, some sort of a blend uh, of the corps warfighting headquarters uh, and the regional uh, and the ASCC command in terms of what they do. And I think the key to this is everybody who we discussed this with, uh, the key to success here is the flexibility and the recognition that each combatant command is, in fact, different. Uh, and so uh, I think that's the answer. Now, some will stay with the ASCC, uh, and some, in fact, will have a core headquarters and then a remnant of the ASCC, a small engagement cell that plugs in. And again, we've designed a proposal for each of our, uh, our uh, combatant commands. And again, this is all pre-decisional. It's an idea, it's a discussion. But I think uh, to compress um, the uh, echelons of command is probably a good idea. There is, in fact, some redundancy. Uh, that is the problem that we're, in fact, trying to, re trying to address. All right, you have hybrid threat, did not mention cyber threat in the asymmetric nature of the, of the Ability of threat to hide themselves or mask identity. What is TRADOC doing in this important aspect to train and defend against a particular form of warfare? Uh, and I think uh, this is, we just had a session with the chief. Uh, if, if I didn't specifically say cyber threat, I think uh, I, I, I should have. Uh, and I think it probably was on the slide. Uh, cyber is a critical dimension of the future. And I think we've already seen uh, some of our potential adversaries on a daily basis uh, attempting to affect, uh, even within our nation, um, their objectives within the United States. And I think we were working very carefully with uh, uh, Red Hernandez and U.S. Uh, Army Cyber Command uh, to work on that. The key will be to establish the career fields, to, to determine how uh, the career path is for those professionals, and then to determine the echelonment of that in terms of from the strategic to the operational and to the tactical. Uh, designing organizations. And I think, yes, there certainly is a tactical dimension to this. And again, how we go about doing that is uh, something we're working very closely with um, Army Cyber Command uh, to, uh, to uh, come up with the best solution possible. General Cohn, to assist industry in aligning its research and development investment with Army capability gaps, will ARCIC release CNA 1418? Where's Keith Walker? <laughs> Keith. There's your answer. See Keith on his panel for further follow-up. More questions. Do you believe the training dimension of TRADOC is sufficiently integrated into the ongoing Army 2020 given budget reductions and state of home station training upgrades and progress? I think this is a challenge for us. Um, I think uh, there are people, um, it, it often uh, concerns me when I hear the statement, um, we need to go, go back to basis, basics, we need to go back to the, to the good old days. The things I like about that from a training perspective is the role in commander in thinking through and designing training. But I think it's got to come with resources. It's got to be matched with a commitment uh, in terms of um, the state-of-the-art uh, training capabilities uh, that link into ops and intel, fusion, things like the foundry program, uh, things like the training brain uh, that have got to challenge and excite a generation of warfighters who spent 10 years downrange and are sort of uh, focused on the adrenaline that comes from chasing real-world bad guys. Um, so the, inv the investment right now is a challenge, and I, and I think that this is an argument that we all need to make, uh, that this is not, if we don't make home station training 
uh, exciting and relevant. We will pay a price in young leaders exiting the Army because th they, they, they don't get it. They, they won't understand the relevance of it. I think regional alignment will help us uh, in tying it together with real world contingencies, but it has to be properly funded uh, to move ahead. And again, I think sometimes uh, this is a key component of readiness and we have to identify it as such and realize the second and third order implications uh, of not properly resourcing that. You talked about hybrid threats. How do you believe the Army is postured to handle a challenge to the space-based capabilities such as GPS or SATCOM that our adversaries bring to the fight? And I think that is, that is a definite, uh, that is a, a key issue in terms of addressing what they conceive to be, they per consider to be one of our vulnerabilities. We have a lot of work to be done uh, in that area, but it's something we have to be very proactive about. Other questions? Please expand on the concept of a richer grade structure for officers and NCOs in the future Army. Well, I, I think um, one of the challenges that we have is as we expanded uh, to the modular brigades, of course, we went to the institutional force and we pulled a lot of senior non-commissioned officers and mid-grade uh, and field-grade officers and pulled them over to man the, the uh, BCT structure in the modular force. As we reduce those brigades, uh, by the number that has been, just say, eight, uh, or we reduce the, the grade plate across the board and there's a, re, a, 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 a impetus to do that, what do we do with these people? And the fact of the matter, my belief is that they need to return to the institutional army uh, from which they came. I think we, we, we did, for instance, TRADOC gave up some 5,800 uh, mid-grade NCOs and officers and passed them over to the operational force. Uh, we then substituted uh, in programs like ROTC and in the schoolhouse great civilian retirees, great civilian contractors. Uh, but as we have examined the Army profession, what we have learned is there are things that probably ought to be taught in the classroom uh, by Army officers, by uh, members of the profession of arms. Uh, we have, uh, are in the process of doing a study across TRADOC in terms of determining the best mix of officer, uh, civilian and contractor to accomplish our tasks. I believe the reality of that will be that we will, we will say, look, we need to re-green the institutional army to some extent. It's a good investment. It takes 15 years to grow a battalion commander, like number sergeant majors or first sergeants. Again, it will appear to be inefficient because we're moving these folks back into the institutional base and we'll be hit for tooth to tail ratio, et cetera. But the reality of it is it gives us the expansibility when needed. If we need to expand the Army, we can move these people back from TRADOC in the schoolhouse. The other point I would make uh, is that it shares the combat experience into the institutional force. I think that's absolutely essential uh, as we move to the future, that our decisions uh, are informed by people who have fairly recent combat experience uh, from, uh, from the operational force. 